Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome to that panel show. Dan here. Mick here. And I'm John. Hello. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. <laughs> no, it was good. Was really was good. Okay? Honestly, yeah, right. We don't need to Honestly. do a second take. We are absolutely Fine. delighted to welcome back John Smith. Now, you might remember... Yay! Uh, Yay! A little... A week or five after we moved into this building, mm. when it was all dark grey in here, John came in uh, when we met first, mm. and it's been a little while. So we're here for a catch-up. We're here to discuss uh, John's upholding of the singer-songwriter... <laughs> Stereotype, <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah. um, and here's some amazing songs. Before that, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cost you anything. Helps us out big time. And please go to that pedal show store if you want to look like Dan. Yeah. Doesn't he look great? He does. Yeah. I think the burgundy suits him. Real nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I only I only wear it because Hades is wearing one, and I thought he looks so good. Out of interest, John, where did you buy your shirt? This is from Portland, Oregon. Of course it is. It. Yeah. I, could have, I would have got that in three, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I love this. It's uh, it's a Pendleton and it's um, it's very comfortable. It's beautiful. I can wear it on stage. It's not too sweaty. Mm -hmm. I need something to hide the sort of <laughs> early middle age onset of, of, uh, of invisible kebab fat. You I don't know? know what you're talking about. This is yeah. just baggy enough. We're out tucking in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're going to cover today, John is going to play uh, electric guitar for us. He's mm. going to play acoustic guitar. He's also going to perform a couple of songs. I don't know, are, you, are they going to be new songs you're going to perform for us today? They're going to be new songs. Great. New yeah. record, uh, The Living Kind, out in March. Um, and it's an extraordinary piece of work, John. Thanks, man. Uh, John was kind enough to share some of the tracks with us, in fact, all the tracks with us, before filming today. And so we'll talk about that. Hey, you've even got the shirt on there. Mm. This is the shirt. This is continuity. This is the continuity, you see, there and here, and maybe at a gig, yeah. you know. It's nice. Right. So people know who I am. And you can put it on your horse overnight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. On my donkey. <laughs> on my mule. Ah. ah. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, why don't we start there then? So uh, the last time we saw you was before the crazy Yes. Of COVID and yeah. lockdown. Oh, wow. It was, two, was it 2018 or 19? It must have been just before, yeah, so 2018 would have been just after yeah. we moved in here. I mean, wow. that's, I can't quite get my head around that it's been that long. Yeah. Uh, bring us up to speed then, you know, briefly, what's been happening. Okay. I appreciate there's about six years to cover. <laughs> well, you know, I came in with some ideas that I didn't quite know how to articulate and Dan managed to streamline them. And you built me that board that was for acoustic and electric. So funny, I remember you saying, oh, you know, for acoustic and a bit of electric. And I thought, oh yeah, it's easy. Mm. And then some then the, then, you, then the ideas start coming up and I'm like, whoa, hang on, let me get a pen yeah. and yeah. Uh, start drawing it out. <laughs> and. And it seems that you've taken those concepts and have just gone on. Yeah. It's all come from that board, man. From that, really? From that build, yeah. The idea of the octave pedal just being on the piezo pickup of right. the acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. the acoustic guitar in stereo, mm. summing two pickups to one signal with effects on different pickups, effects just on the summed signal chain, and... Um, <clears throat> and then dropping in really interesting bits of colour along the way just to serve particular songs. Right. And so I went with that, and then gigging stopped, obviously, mm -hmm. a couple of years after we filmed that. I went and did, you know, 150 shows on that setup. Wow. Because it served me so well. Man. Awesome. It was amazing. Oh, I'm so pleased. Oh, no, mate, thank you so much. I mean, it, it just, I got everything out of it that I needed to. And then when gigs stopped, I started looking at how to how to shrink it all down when I started touring again. And, right. Um, I went back on Your tour. Your board has shrunk as much as mine. Yeah, and it's tiny, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, it's so small. Well, there's another board over there that we might just touch <laughs> on in a second. But... Right. I think so, yeah. I, um, you know, I, I had different iterations of that stereo board on, oh, okay. on different size setups. And really, I was only touring internationally with an acoustic guitar. Okay. But I knew that with this record... I was going to be taking two guitars, this and an acoustic. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, well, how do I, how do I do all of that? 
all of, you know, there's two signal paths and all the various effects. How do I do that on something that I can fit in a rucksack, essentially? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I discovered the quad cortex. Mm -hmm. So that is taking the place now of the line switcher, my acoustic preamp, the oh, octave okay. pedal. Right. So I can do all those things. It's the, you know, it's as big as a laptop. Plus I can approximate an El Capistan and a blue sky. That's my travel rig. Right. So when you get on a plane and go to Portland, Oregon to buy some more shirts. Exactly, which I'm doing is, in a few weeks. Yeah. This is what you'll take. Exactly. And everything's there because you've got, as you say, the two inputs. Mm -hmm. So one electric, one acoustic. Well, actually, that's uh, two pickups of an acoustic guitar. Oh, of course. And then the electric guitar goes in another input. Uh -huh. So I can essentially take my stereo acoustic and the electric guitar. And run it through that. We'll expand on the acoustic yeah. in a middle in a little bit, but there you go. Very mm. cool. Any problems traveling with that? I'm gonna try it out for the first time. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I don't want to preempt that then. In a week or so. Yeah. <laughs> when the very helpful air steward says, uh, I'm sorry, sir, you yeah. can't bring that programming device on here. Yeah. What I really love about this, mm. sorry to tangent, is that the Layla expression pedal mm -hmm. is so beautiful. Tones with this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It, the colour coordination with everything is, it's is quite amazing. You've <laughs> even gone for the black versions of the H9 and, and the, the blue, blue sky. sky. Yeah. It just appeals yeah. to my sense of uh, yeah, so yeah. much. I, Very good. That was a conscious effort. I did a lot of buying and selling along the way to get to that point. <laughs> and I don't actually mind the fact that the the L cap is still grey. That's the, that's the V2, which doesn't come in black yet. So. Yeah, but I think yeah. where you've got it positioned, above the quad <laughs> yeah. cortex, it, it works, it's okay. And I think those no. of us in the graphics world would call it 80% black, not grey. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. See? That bit of coordination, actually, completely has to go to Jake at the gig rig. He, <laughs> he lined that up. What do you think of this? Oh, I love it. So, <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, you, he's a good boy. He's a really he's a, good yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, very good. So, good young man. He's married now, got married a couple of months ago. He's a very respectable and, uh, very, young man. Yes, he's, yeah. he's now turned a corner. He's now gone from hardcore young Jakey to respectable, yes. totally, mm. but not, yeah. not at all. We're all um, boys at heart, let's be yes, honest. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Especially when we're doing this caper. Yeah. No, him and Jake have, have uh, they pulled out all the stops and they did an amazing job. Oh, yeah, man. Joe's knowledge of MIDI came in so handy because I've discovered MIDI. <laughs> and I, did, really? I never thought I would. I just, because it terrifies me, I studied it at music college. Right. And my, my, I don't have that kind of brain, really. It just sort of goes in and out. And then bits of MIDI have been explained to me, and Ooh. Tristan Shume sat me down and said, uh, no the great Tristan Shume, Hello, right? Tristan, if you hey, Tristan. One of the best acoustic guitar players around, and a bit of a technical wizard. He just sat me down and said, look, you can do this, and then things happen with a MIDI controller. So I had the, I started on the Morningstar mm -hmm. MC6, and then got G3 Atom, and then I realized what I needed was not to be tap dancing at gigs. Mm. Because as much as I love the quad cortex, my size 13s yeah. in this area get a bit messy. And if I hit two of those buttons at the same time, things go wrong. It's all over. Um, so the G3 has kind of rescued all of that. So I've got the G3 in the effects loop of the quad cortex, controlling okay. all the MIDI and everything's got a bit more space for the, for the big feet. And adding another shenanigan guy along the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool. Get into that in a second in Sorry, a bit, yeah, bit more detail. On. No, no, absolutely. So lo uh, lockdown and COVID happens, and for the life of someone who spends essentially their life on the road, mm. that must have been a bit tough. I know we're going back in time, but we haven't seen John for a long time. It's yeah, worth it's just been, reflecting it's been a while, on that. Isn't it? Because I think, I think I can hear it in your new record. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was really, um, it was totally discombobulating. And and just, you know, I was yanked out of my routine and things were going really well. In 2019, I, I played, I don't know, 120 shows. I was on the road 200 days that year. Wow. And then as soon as that stopped, not only did I realize that I was away too much, you know, everything stops, you have to be at home. Turns out my family really like me and I really like them. Oh, well, you know. that's, that's the right way for it to go, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We all get on really well. And uh, and it was lovely actually just to stop and, and take stock and prioritize, you know, family, mm. my daughter, over touring. And for my whole identity as a, you know, me, I've always been sort of intrinsically 
tied in with the me that's on stage. And if I'm not on stage, I just feel really lousy. Who are you? And I had to figure out how, how does that uh, work? How do I actually get around that and be wow. and function without the stage? How long have you been performing live for? I started when I was about 15. Okay. Wow. So 67 seven, years. 67 <laughs> years in this jacket. <laughs> yeah. And it still looks new. It's yeah. incredible. Um, so yeah. 20, 27 years, man. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it became a big part of who I am. So figuring out who I am away from the stage. It was really good, actually. Mm. Yeah. But I was really looking forward to getting back to it. And how did it feel when it started to open up again and you were able to travel again? Because I guess there were those few, first few tentative months of weirdness <laughs> yeah. that were properly weird for everyone, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was amazing. There was a lot of uh, juggling of, of kind of rules of, you know, personal space. Yeah. And oh, yes, of course. How do you interact at a merch table? Yeah. How do you get on a plane? It was amazing. Chuck it just down, throw it, yeah. Take it. Give me your money. Um, I just had to... <laughs> had to Go re- on. Yeah. You know, and I, I was like, if I get COVID on this tour, I had a band with me on, on, the, on the return tour. You know, it all, it all goes south and no one gets paid. So yeah, I was having yeah. to be really careful, wearing a mask. and mm. You know, I just kind of, I went with it, did the best I could. But about, I don't know, six months, seven months in, I went to Vancouver to play Vancouver Island Folk Festival. I flew, I wore my mask, I got off the plane, I went to the Holiday Inn down, downtown Vancouver, and I took my COVID test, which I still do whenever I land anywhere, just in case. Mm-hmm. Took my test, I had COVID. So I went and <laughs> I just sat in the room for five, six days. I, As long as I legally had to stay in one place, yeah, yeah. according to both you know, Canadian and British rules. Yep. And I went home. Just, turn, you know, waited it out. Oh, went, man. Tested negative, went home. And it was so, it was a, it was a, there was a weird process of trial yeah. and error coming back to performing. Yeah, yeah. But now, you know, I've got a load of dates coming up and I feel pretty confident that it's all going to be okay. All back on. Yeah, we've Touch been, wood. obviously a long time has passed since all of this happened, but it does, it has taken... Yeah, it's taken this amount of time for people to feel confident and being out and yeah. doing gigs again. But all, yeah. the, all the gigs I've been to recently have been packed. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. Let, yeah. let us not dwell on that because it all seems like a bad memory. Hmm. Um, so fast forward then. Yeah. When did you start making this record? In January 2022, I had a little window and I had a load of US dates books. So I went and, went and did them and I played to... You know, I played to eight people in San Francisco wow. when lockdown had just lifted. Wow. And then the next play, the next night, I played to 150 people in Phoenix. There so I was, I was, I was on this weird trip, man. And I, I went to Maine to visit my brother Joe Henry, and we sat in front of his fireplace, and wrote a song after dinner one night. And we went upstairs and demoed it in his kind of music room. It's not like a soundproof studio. He's just yeah. got a, an office slash writing room above his garage. It's freezing outside, snow is falling. We, re- we cut this demo of a song called Lily and we looked at each other and, and he said to me, there's no reason why we can't make a record. Last and, track on the record. Yeah. yeah. And we used that demo. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. He just said, there's no reason why we shouldn't do this. We've been talking about making a record for years, but the stars have never really aligned. Mm-hmm. So we, we decided we'd get together later that year and then that turned out to be quite a busy year in the end. I got back there a full calendar year later um, in the first week of February last year, 2023. And we and we went up into a studio and cut the record in four days with a, nice. with a bass player no called way. Ross Gallagher, who is an amazing New York jazz bass player yeah. who I'd never played with before. And uh, So there's a lot of <laughs> on the new album? Yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. like Seinfeld, man. Brilliant. It's a tribute to the, <laughs> yeah. to the incidental music on Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing the sax. Um, no, Levon Henry, Joe's son, who plays with Julian Large. He's, oh, he's a badass out, Reeds man. player, man. And wow. he, he was playing uh, clarinet and sax. And also, he's a great engineer, so he was, he was at the controls. Yeah. So four of us in a room, but only with four channels. So we... Yeah. Oh, brilliant. What? Yeah, so we cut... Guitar, vocal, and bass all live, and then overdubbed some atmospheric guitar stuff and leave on on the reeds and backing vocals, and that was all we did. 
No And way. then we farmed it out to some other musicians. We had Jay Bellarose play some drums. Um, you know, Robert Plant. And yeah. Great. The, the great Jay Bellarose. Um, Patrick Warren in Los Angeles, who who writes the music for True Detective. And, uh, and Joshua Van Tessel up in Toronto. He did some drums and percussion on the first track on the record. He plays uh, with Bahamas. Great drummer. So some beautiful musicians. Mm. And they, you know, the wonderful thing about remote recording is it can be done in a day and they send it back and you hear it and it's, it sounds like they're in the room. You know? Yeah, wow. Well. What I think you can hear throughout the record, though, is that mm. nucleus of people interacting. Yeah. It definitely does not sound like a record that was done with diverse yeah. geographical reality. Uh, yeah. Over Zoom. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a vibe on it. Mm. Well, maybe that tees us in nicely to start talking about the symbiosis of new record and board then, because okay. just given the record a spin, one thing that leaps out is there's all kinds of quite ambitious reverbs everywhere mm -hmm. on the guitars. There's little squelches and farty noises and little things that feel like they've been... Yeah. you know, very deliberately put in there. Mm. And that seems to segue perfectly with, again, I appreciate it's been a, a long time, where we left off last time. Yeah. I, I, <clears throat> sorry to bang on. I, I, I'll i never forget being in Bristol watching you play. And I think it might have been playing Joanna or something, but, mm. and you hit a note and you hit this massive reverb that swells. Mm. You know, there's a guy stood on stage with an acoustic guitar and all of a sudden this ethereal thing happens yeah, yeah, and the whole yeah, yeah, audience yeah. is like oh man i'm in i'm actually in this moment yeah and it feels like this is a that's what it's all about man i remember that gig yeah it was it was magic yeah and it, it, that was just sticking on the modulated reverb on the blue sky hmm. for that slight chorus thing and a slightly longer trail and it just goes Poof. yeah it's magic man never like what the hell is that yeah how does he do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah he does that by miraculously not hitting the wrong button how I mean, do we get here then? So it comes from that. You know, when I first started getting into effects, I was using a DTAR Solstice, big chunky preamp for yeah, two mm -hmm. channels, because it's Remember all about that. it's all about very the stereo. Cool thing. Very cool. Mm. I've still got a couple in, in the garage. You know, that's about blending two pickups and yep. sending it back out. Great bit of kit. And then I got a blue sky and an El Capistan and velcroed them to the top of that. And that was my rig for a couple of years. And then I started looking at pedal boards, thinking I can put this on a board. Then I came here, and then now we're here. So I've still got the Blue Sky. I've still got the El Capistan. I'm still running stereo pickups out of the acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. But now I've got the electric guitar. And the ethos is still the same. I want to have effects serving the song or mm -hmm. serving different parts of songs. The, the hope is that people come away from a gig going, that bit in the third verse of Joanna, that was really special. Instead of going, that bit when he's stuck on a longer reverb in the in the third yeah. song, I really noticed that. Yeah. You kind of don't want people to notice what's happening. You yeah. just, you just oh, want the, them the, to the feel songs the song. Are, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And if it goes too far over that line, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Okay. So my hope is that on here, there's really only effects that are serving the song. Though it looks like a lot of gear, the idea is quite simple. I've I've got one kind of master um, bank on the G3. Mm -hmm. Did I do that right? Is it a bank? You got. Yeah, well, you've got... Yes. I'm learning, finally. <laughs> yeah, so you've got... But you've got banks for the acoustic and banks for the electric. Yeah. And well, you're, then you're activating all of this. We yeah. do get <clears throat> a, a significant number of questions to that pedal show saying, I play electric and acoustic on the same gig. Can I use the same rig? Well, can you? Here's the, mm. here's the sort of nth degree of that. Yeah, this is taken to its to extremes for sure. Yeah, because we've got stereo acoustic and stereo electric here. Yeah. So there's four amplifiers. Oh, yeah, just to explain us. that, we've got two <laughs> AERs doing stereo acoustic and a Benson, is it a Nathan Junior? That's a Nathan Junior. Nathan Junior yeah. and a Princeton doing the stereo electric guitars. So, uh, yeah. Well, let's hear some electric stuff and then we'll jump onto the acoustic and then okay. we'll, um, yeah. So, all right. Yeah, tell us about this thing. So, this is the mule. This. This is a hell of a guitar. He, he and I have been talking a while because he built a resophonic guitar for my my friend and, and hero, Kelly Joe Phelps. Oh, wow. And Kelly toured that on his last record. Right. And, you know, an amazing instrument. And then we just got in touch one day. Um, turned out he was into what I, I do and I was into what he did. And 
So eventually he sent me a Mavis, which is the Thin Line Resophonic yeah. guitar, yeah. which was absolutely amazing and knocked me out. And then six months later, I got one of these. And something happened with this, whereas the Mavis just ideas fell out of it. I found with this, songs were falling out of it. And so this really informed wow. the direction of the new record. I, I, straight away, I was coming up with ideas for songs and all of the the main electric guitar work on the album is this guitar. Okay. I'm going to be touring the world with this instrument, I wow. think, for the next year or so. Like a morning breaks that dividing line, hung her out to lose her mind. That low to be. All you can do not to stop and stay Tell her it'll be fine Going on the just in time Do you love her with a cold heart? Do you love her with a cold heart? That dividing line Sooner or later you pick a side Do you love him with a cold heart? Do you love him with a cold heart? It's just, it's a real songwriter's instrument. And it's, um, it's just so musical. It's got a lot, this beautiful neck, this hand carved neck, and then this mad steel body that just sounds completely three dimensional. I, I, I've never played a guitar like it. So this is the electric side. Mm -hmm. Is it, um, what tuning are we? So I'm in open F, yeah. which is like open G down a whole step with a low B flat. 
No, four. Low four. Wow. But then it's capoed up on the fifth fret. Okay. So I've got some songs where there's no capo and it's really, you know, it's, this will probably be horribly out of tune now, but it sounds really big. So good. If you feel in any way frustrated that uh, John's vocals weren't coming through brilliantly there, don't worry. He's oh. going to perform properly when we uh, when we'll put a proper vocal mic on him. I'll do my best on that audio. But uh, I realised yeah, as, yeah. as soon as I opened my mouth, I realised what I was doing wrong there. No, what Sorry, I, is so great because with you, there's no singing and guitar playing. They they are completely symbiotic, aren't yeah. they? They yeah. happen together, yeah. As, yeah. and that's who you are. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> that just sounds killer. So we were hearing that was guitar, bit of blue sky, and both bit the of blue amps. Sky. So that that is just blue sky with the modulated reverb, the kind of chorusy thing. So then I've I've got if I turn that off, I've got another chorus here under the hood. Do we lift up and mm -hmm. show the engine? Yeah, come on then. All oh, right. So I've got the free the tone chorus under there. Again, really subtle, but just a bit less subtle than, than the blue sky. It's gorgeous. And then over there, I've got the hologram microcosm, which is... <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> What's it doing? Here we go. Yeah, and then we've got the hold button midied up on the G3, so I can set a nice pad and then... Play over it. Leave it purring away in the background. But then. I can turn the hold off and just let it do its thing. Oh man, give us some of that. Give us some of that. The atmospheric guitar on the new record is that thing, and I, I bought it. Fire Sorry, out. Nick. I can't pull my board apart again. <laughs> I bought it, and I'd never played it before. I just someone told me it was great. Maybe Tristan texted me and said, "Just get a microcosm." So, and then you just use the presets, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. obviously, regular viewers of that pedal show will know that Dan and I are completely happy with plugging in stuff and getting crazy sounds and it being amazing in and of itself. What you will hear if you give John's new record a spin is it actually being used in the context mm. of songs and not feeling, if, if, if it's okay for me to say, not feeling superfluous or for the sake of it. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's or just actually taped on. part of, yeah. of, and it the makes music. perfect sense yeah. Yeah. in it. That's the idea. Oh, I'm so, I'm so cool. glad that comes across, man. How do you get there? Like, those sounds, and you were do, doing a thing before mm. on the acoustic where you had the L cap quite crunchy and distorted, and you were doing this whole stuff. It's like, how do you go from a singer, songwriter, acoustic thing to going, you know what? I'm going to crunch up some delay and put some synth pads on here. And I'm like, <laughs> how do you get to that point? Because I haven't heard that yeah. before, really, in... Yeah. in that sort of a context. It's quite unique. Yeah, thanks, man. I I don't know, really. I, like, with the delay, it just, it's just kind of, it's that rhythm. Oh, where are we? It's the micro, oh, right, okay, we'll turn you off. 
So that that rhythm just around headlong. I was just playing along to that and a song came out of it and I've gone back to that delay setting and just haven't changed it. And it's, and it's there, you <laughs> it's know, three so, records later. But the interesting thing about that, you won't get another delay that sounds like that. There's a unique thing in the Strymon yeah. that they've, you know, they really capture those sounds beautifully. Squelchy. I mean, you'll get other, other, you know, other crunchy, uh, you know, compressed tape type things, but there's a, a sound in the LCAP that's mm. really special. Mm. Um, but that's so cool. Yeah, I can't do without that pedal. Mm. It sounds particularly squelchy in the effects loop. Maybe I d I don't know I don't know if if it's being if the sound is being altered by the fact that it's going through the G three into the quad cortex or what, but it sounds particularly good. It, it sounds just, a little more distorted. Because you've got yeah. control over gains and stuff, so you might be yeah. hitting it in a different way. Um I might have it gained up a little. Yeah. It's very cool. So that that sound is just kind of trial and error, I think, mm. you know, and, and just seeing what works. And for the song, I'll play this song in question a bit later. It just really works on that song, mm. that slightly distorted delay. And, and when we mixed the record, um, Jason, who who mixed the record, he uh, he just said, you know, what do you think of this? And he he kind of, I don't know, I think the technical term is squelched yeah. everything a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and then it just turns out that the Capistan can kind of do that anyway. You know? What's the track called, John? Candle. I think we should hear it now. Right on. Spills on the table, and I'm good. 
and back in the room. Um, we haven't heard that yet, so uh, that's we why. Can, I'm going to predict it was absolutely amazing. Yes, yes, I think it's absolutely <laughs> amazing. So uh, have you got a separate board for your 18 fuzz pedals? <laughs> <laughs> when I was at the gig rig, I, I tried out the uh, Analog Man King of Tone, the red, red yeah. e similar colour to this jumper. Yes. Yeah. And I realised I, I don't... If I'm going to get into that world, that's that's all I need. I just have to sell all my pedals in order to <laughs> to finance one. But man, what a sound! It's amazing. Yeah, blew me we, away. Yeah, it's, they're they're wonderful. But we're we're in clean land, are we, with the electric guitar? I think so. I yep. haven't figured out how I can use any of yeah that, the, that of kind sound. of sound yeah. okay. yet. You know, yeah. For now, it's it's clean, slightly a little hot going into the amp. You know, I'm I'm coming out of the the Princeton emulator on the quad cortex into the into those amps driving it a tiny bit hot so it breaks up a little bit but yeah. not, not too much you know? yeah yeah wicked and then um what else have we got electric guitar wise then okay so we've got the therme which is just the loveliest analog delay Microcosm. Then this thing, the freeze function on the quad cortex, I'm controlling here. Then this thing, this is a <laughs> another Tristan Hume innovation, reverse mode T. And this, if you would be so kind as to do the expression pedal, Mick. There's one song in which I'm going to use that in the gig. Amazing. Know. And what, where's that? That's coming from the Eventide, button. is it? No, that's that's coming from here oh, actually. Yeah. From there. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. These four, these four effects on here. Yeah. The gate, um, an octave, a, a pitch shifter, and a reverb. I think a gate, a pitch shifter, a, a delay, and a reverb. Then I've got the H9. We've got the reverse delay, which is similar, but belongs on a different song. The big dark matter reverb for the end of a song, let's say it's the last chord of a song. Give it a push on a big chord. It's beautiful. And then wow. I can mute and switch guitars while it's still reverberating and then get in with the next song. That's kind of my cover the end of a song reverb. I like it. The really weird thing on here, and uh, again, Tristan texted me and said, do you, do you hear that the Zoya can now be used as a sampler? In the background, for like the last year, I've been trying to come up with ways to trigger samples on my pedal board. And I've tried a, a variety of loop pedals. I've built a whole, on a Schmidt Array 250, I built a kind of sampler trigger thing, but mm -hmm. the the commands were too confusing and I ended up tripping over it mm. again, just more tap dancing. And then I was thinking about getting a sampler, mounting it under the board, and it turns out you can do it on the Zoya. So um, between them, Tristan and, and Joe at the gig rig managed to wire this up for me. So when I'm playing this song, The World Turns, which I'll, I'll play in a bit, I can... Uh... If you hit the sample one button for me, please, Dan.
just drop that in, you know, where it serves the song. And... So it's like a, like a reed thing. Kind of. Yeah, it's just some of that atmosphere that's on the on the record between the reeds and the and the guitar with the microcosm. I have no That's, idea how that works. Yeah, I said, uh, <laughs> so their samples just loaded into the Zoya, I guess, and you're triggering them from G3, is that right? Yeah. yeah. When I said earlier about pops and bleeps and little extra little bits, that is exactly what I'm yeah. talking about on the record. Yeah. And it's all over the record, and yeah. it's a really, a really, really beautiful thing. Tell you what else is amazing, man. You know, even with all this finery, that kind of pattern that you're playing there, mm -hmm. I've only got to hear that for 10 seconds, and it is you. Oh, yeah. Cool. It is you. And that's your... Thanks, man. That's, yeah, of the many things you do, I, I, that's like, oh, there's John. Yeah, there's John. Thanks, brother. It's really cool. It's flipping, flipping cool. Oh, Sorry, I'm, I'm all effusive. Well, it's nice because you can go and do a gig just with the, do it all on an acoustic guitar and it still yeah. works. It's just great fun to do this. Yeah. And, you know, as the ideas developed, and I realised that my, I'm really fortunate to, you know, have a couple of Schmidt Array boards, right? Sure. I think they're they're just the best. And I got onto Marty and I said, look, I think the 450 is not going to be big enough for this next idea. <laughs> and and I wonder if there's there could be something a bit bigger that looks like a kind of like a Moog. If we could yeah, do it out yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. in walnut and black. And you, uh, you might not be able to see it, but the sides are very Moog coloured. Yeah. It's it's a beautiful thing. And he said, sure. So we came up with this idea of a well, it's it's a, it's a signature board. But then he liked the idea so much, he's he's called it the special edition. And now, you know, you can buy whatever size you want in that colour scheme with the leather handle and the lice. It's got, you can't uh, see yeah, on the camera, the but handle. it's also got like the fixings at the bottom are, are like matte black as well, which appear, really appeals to my inner metal head. Yeah, we had, we had a chat <laughs> about metal earlier. You were, you were a serious metal fan. I was, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pray tell. Just growing up. I grew up in a tiny little rough fishing town and all, all there was to do was smoke and listen to metal and, and what were you listening to well a lot of metallica okay a yeah. lot of metallica practicing my down down up down down up down down up okay yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> are you alive all that and then later on i still like i listen to if i'm on the m6 i need to get home mastodon <laughs> as loud as possible that gets me home <laughs> Red Fang, just sludgy, horrible, Did you terrible ever play that stuff? noise. I love it. Did you ever play any of, the, any uh, of that stuff? No. Not, not really. A little, kind of a little when I was like 17, 18. Okay, sorry. Yeah. You, you're a massive metal fan. Yeah. How did you get from that to John Smith that we all know? Um, via Nick Drake. Oh, yeah. okay. I think I think maybe my older brother saw the path that I was on and he just sat me down one night and said... He said no. He said, listen to this. Stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he played me Five Leaves Left by Nick Drake. And this can... has all the power you need. Yes. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just changed my life completely, that moment. And then from that, I, you know, everything yeah. after that, Richard Thompson, John Martin, and then Neil Young. I was always into Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin mm. are my, my favourite band ever. But then I started, once I got into, you know, proper songwriting, I started appreciating Led Zeppelin in a different way. I just started getting my head around songwriting and, and what that would involve and started trying trying to be a songwriter. That's the only way you can do anything, right? You want to yeah. be a guitarist, try and be a guitarist. So yeah. then I kind of, I learned what I was doing over the next 10 years. And Amazing. That got me here. Amazing. Yeah. From Mastodon to... So good, but you know, on the Metallica side of things, Dan, you know, that um, that down, down, up Hetfield thing, yeah, the, the title track of the new record, it, it, it's that pattern. It's basically battery by Metallica in a in a jig feel. Come on, yeah, exactly. I need love, I need love, I need love, I need love. Instead of battery. <laughs> it's funny, as soon as I heard that I need love bit, I was like, 
He's expecting a sing along there. There you go. Is oh. it, yeah. It's not a folk gig without a sing along, is there? <laughs> well, look, let's yeah. let's transition to this guitar. Now, okay, cool. Um, because this is amazing. Yeah. Well, I'll give you that a sec. Okay, so right. just check this out for a second. I'm going to put okay. down my. Uh, thank you, Mick. That's the uh, the uh, reverb mug. Um, and some excellent green tea. Indeed. Mm. Um, so, okay. I walked in. Late as usual, and Mick says, Dan, try this out. And I saw this guitar and I thought, Oh, wow, hold on. Hello. <laughs> so I, I, I saw this and I thought, And I thought, and on the fourth day, um, I thought, there, oh, okay, that's like, do you remember the Kramer Telecaster? Thin body things that um, when yeah, it came out, yeah. Fender did one recently. Somebody's forgotten half of the guitar. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Been they, through, they only had small wood. Exactly, yeah. it's been through exactly. a bit. Yeah. Small, small trees. And I thought, well, that's going to be that's going to sound, you know, like a thin thing. But I'm sure it's great for, for just plugging in. If we can we mute this? How do you mute? Yeah, man. There we go. I mean, I'm going to hand it to you to play because okay. just play an open chord on that thing. Acoustic guitar. How it's amazing. It has infinitely more acoustic really qualities than it deserves to have. So I'm touring with two guitars now, right? Mm -hmm. And I travel solo. I don't have a guitar tech, I don't have a crew, I don't have a tour bus. And I was thinking, how can I how can I take two guitars and not break myself? And I've been looking at a lot of kind of thin line acoustic guitars and just thinking, is is there a way to do this so that it sounds like an acoustic guitar? and feels like an acoustic guitar and gives me everything I need from an acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to Roger at Fylde, you know, who makes, I think, the best acoustic guitars in the country, some of the best acoustic guitars in the world. No arguments here. Yeah. You know, if you don't know Fylde just... guitars, please check them out. F-Y-L-D-E, yeah. uh, British made, just astonishing instruments. Where are they based? Penrith, yeah. Cumbria, is it Cumbria? Cumbria, yeah, yeah the Lake District. Yeah. Roger, wow. Roger is a genius and loves trying things out. I mean, he built me a a fan fret seven string baritone resonator once. Cause I, we just got talking about it over whiskey and he said, all right, I'll try it. It kind of worked, you know. <laughs> try, I, what we didn't account for was playing slide on fan frets. Yeah. So it's uh, not yeah. great. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, okay. But with this, I, I mentioned this to him in October at the Ullapool Guitar Festival that I go to every year. And uh, I was just saying, you know, is there a way to build something that's the depth of a Telecaster that sounds like an acoustic guitar? And he said, "All right, well, let me get my head around it." And then he starts. So he, this, sorry, this is a, this isn't something that's available. This is a custom thing for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, man, that Rod was that was the sound of a gauntlet dropping, basically, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. Rogers called this the Smith Caster. It's um, it's a redwood top, and I think Macassar ebony yeah, back like and sides. That's what um, I was going to say, Casa Ebony. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Macassa. Macassa, Macassa Sukasa. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sukasa Ebony. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, and it sounds like an acoustic guitar. It's just, it doesn't have all of that tremendous bottom end that my other files do, but neither do most guitars. No. So. And also, is there a, um, a practical benefit to that, a, apart from being able to carry it around on stage, being amplified at, low, low, at volume? Well, I can get this in the mule caster in a, in one double gig bag. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, carry it with me wherever I go. That's the plan. Amazing. Yeah. And in there, we've got uh, a microphone and a piezo, so it's a dual output. I've got the now extinct LR Bags um, dual source pickup yeah. system, which I have in all my acoustic guitars. They don't make them anymore. It's it's the best pickup they ever made, in my opinion. So I've got a there's a a mic. A transducer. Where is it? I think it's. I think it's kind of there. Mm -hmm. There's a transducer. No, sorry, a cardioid mic mounted in a block of foam, glued on there, and then a piezo under here. They come out in stereo, and then they go into into the rig. So, twin volume controls or volume and tone? Um, 
I've got actually these these controls are for when it's in mono. So then you get volume and mix. When it's in stereo, I think it's volume on either pickup. Okay. But I, I just set them at full and leave it alone. Okay. Just in case, you know. Sure. Um, I, I take all of the treble out of the piezo and then a little bass out of the mic and then you plug it in and it sounds kind of like an acoustic guitar. Wow. Yeah. Let's hear it then. Right on. We've got a couple of ghosts in the machine where the the octave thinks it's on and it's off and there's also a rattle that we've been chasing down so don't beat us up about if you hear a little distortion in the sound don't beat us up about levels it's not that something's rattling and we chased it down and we can't find it so it's in we're just gonna have to live with it for a second yeah yeah there's a tiny bit of uh, analog distortion in the acoustic guitar that we just can't figure out yeah Roger will know exactly what it is it's there. Yeah. So that is how it's supposed to sound, I think. It's a wire, I think. Something's happening. So there it is, that's the... Else, huh? That's you. That's you there. right there. There you are. Yeah, there it is. And so what we're, as you say, uh, a split output, one mic, one piezo. We're going in mm -hmm. stereo to the quad cortex. Quad, quad, quad cortex, and we're getting stereo reverb from the blue sky. Uh, we're getting mono reverb always on from. The, hang on, no, we're getting stereo, stereo reverb. Beg your pardon, always on from the blue sky. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. I just can't live without. Just to let you hear that for a second. Goes widescreen, right? And yeah, I've got two signal paths on the quad cortex. You know, I'm, I'm probably not using this thing the way it's intended, but it really works for acoustic guitar. I think I've literally only ever heard them being used for metal. Yeah, and they, they're great for that, you know. Yeah. I've watched countless videos of, of people like Rabia just, yeah. you know, using it for shredding. It sounds amazing, but Jen Butterworth in, in Glasgow got me onto the idea that you can use it for acoustic guitar. And it works, man. I've got my piezo there, EQ'd. I've got my mic there, EQ'd. That mic's loud, man. Mm. Sure, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then I've got my octave on the piezo side, so it doesn't make my voice sound like something satanic, you know, <laughs> which I've done before and it, at a festival and it wasn't pretty. Because your voice is picked up by the microphone in the yeah. guitar. So you're singing uh, and then okay, so yeah. you get an octave down voice coming out of the PA <laughs> right, and, and chil children start running away. <laughs> so to explain that, the octave sending a MIDI message from here, turning on the octave there, but that's only on the piazzo. On the piazzo side. Yeah. side. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Can we just hear that for a sec? Yeah. Just fattens because you've you because the octave is only on the piazza side, not the mic. Yeah. So you've got the the directness of the mic, and then this fatness just sits underneath it. So it's yeah. not like yeah. you're not playing bootsy. Yeah. You know exactly. It's like just just <laughs> thickens up the bottom end. It's lovely. And it's the same thing. I I almost don't want people to hear it. It's just an impression of yeah something, and they feel like something's happening. Yeah. But hopefully, can't tell exactly what it is. How do you do that rhythmical stuff? It's it's hypnotic. It's actually my little finger doing the bass drum.
And you know, if, you, if you've got space between the notes, you can. But I, ne I never have time to get up there. Just use my little finger. Do you go through tops on guitars? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The guitar I bought here six years ago is is starting to. It's like Willie Nelson's it. guitar now. Yeah, is it yeah, a big yeah. hole in it? I'm going to wear through it one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you don't. You wouldn't go for a pick guard or anything like that to stop no, that. No, I don't like the way they look. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And if yeah. I get a hole, you know, Roger can stick a bit of wood in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. You are familiar with the three rules of buying guitar, are you? <laughs> no. What it looks like, what it looks like, and what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazing. There's, so, there's three types of musician, the, the ones that can count and the ones that can't. <laughs> Spectacular. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, so we have this. What's quite interesting about this for the acoustic purists of you out there, who may be uh, less familiar with John, or indeed this whole uh, world of amplified acoustic guitar and adding effects to it. There is. Do you ever come across the sort of the purist angle where people are like, "Oh man, you can't amplify it like that, and you mustn't put all these effects on." Honestly. Very, very infrequently. Yeah. And sometimes people come up, it's usually, you know, men of a certain age coming up and just saying, you know, I, I heard such and such and they had a mic on it and it sounded fine. You don't need all those effects. Yeah. And what was that? Trader. What was that? Um, <laughs> oh, Judas. But, yeah, yeah, Judas. That's Dylan, right. Yeah. Bob Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've had that a few times. Yeah, yeah. But usually but with a laugh. You can't argue with know. the results, though. I mean, it's no. It's extraordinary, well, and that... it is. It isn't just effective. It is so moving to hear you. You know, when, when these things come on, it's not like exactly as you said. It's not like okay, well, there's a there's a crunchy delay and a big reverb, but just mm. the sound of the guitar just goes. It just goes into a new space, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and enabling you to do something else. Exactly. It's so, it's so good, man. It's Thanks, kind man. of where I was going with that, because, you know, for those of you who love a Martin 0028 and a U67 or whatever it is for that, that absolutely purest thing, great, that's one thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, and it's yeah. a beautiful thing in its yeah. where it's designed to be, but this world is, is a world of its own. Mm. Now we're at... X thousand watts on a huge stage, mm. the power that comes from electrifying and adding all this fidelity creates a whole new set of sonics. Absolutely. And I, that's what I find so exciting about your sound at, at volume. So, well, and also, Mick, if I may, you know, the idea of taking guitar and a mic is great until you try and get, do it in a big venue. Exactly. And then you just run yeah. into problems, unless, yeah, yeah, yeah. unless you've got a very specific audience and a very specific gig. It's, it's really hard to get it right. And I've tried, and in certain venues, I will maybe just go out with a guitar and a mic, but I also have to keep myself interested. Yeah, you know? yeah, and I, and I have to vary the way I play these songs, otherwise I'm going to lose interest. And of course, yeah. it's it's enabled your development as an, as an artist. Exactly. And then you have this unique sound. Yeah. So where do we... We've heard a bit of uh, lovely reverb there from the blue sky. Hmm. Where do we go from there? With the acoustic? Yeah. Mm. So it's all the same. I wanted... I didn't want to change um, banks and have a whole load of effects on another bank. Yeah. I just wanted it to be labelled. I know where everything is. So mm. I've got all the same effects on the acoustic side. No way. Bar the samples, which I don't need on any of the acoustic material. Right. So, you know, there'll be, say, the old cap. Oh, hello. That was good. How, how, how this did, is the feedback control then, is it? Right, okay. So yeah. I leave that switched on. That was cool. Woo, 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 woo. Then you throw in the octave.
Far out, man. That's so cool. Far out, man. Uh, uh, some, <laughs> that is just wonderful. Wow. Yeah. And that the, there is crunch coming off the L cap. Heard it really clearly there. Mm. But in a kind of very musical. It's very wholesome, isn't it? Mm. It makes it sound so contemporary. Hmm. Yeah. It makes it sound like a record that was made last, you know, this year rather than harking back to something 40 years ago, mm -hmm. which is all very well if you want to do that, but it, it makes it contemporary. Oh, I flipping love that. Yeah, man. Thank you. I, I, I just love that pedal. I, um... Oh, that's the dark matter, isn't it? Yeah. Bring your own cathedral, man. Well, there's a question then. Yeah. So you'll be playing Union Chapel. Yeah. Uh, on this tour. Yes. Yeah. The tour starts April the third in Bristol. Yeah. With the Beacon, then it's the Union Chapel the day after, and then all over the country. What happens when you play a reverb like that in Union Chapel, which for those of you who don't know, is a lovely big reverberant room that used to be a church? Well, well the last the, the last time I played in there uh, was with the Milk Carton Kids, just with an acoustic guitar, three of us around one mic. Wow. And that works in the Union Chapel. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what that does in yeah. the Union Chapel. It might all implode. I don't know. Yeah. We'll Why find we out. Shudder a bit when you go in there and you see a drum kit and it's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's hard work. Yeah. 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 No, I'm, I'm just going to switch it all on and see what happens, you know? Good man. Yeah. Good man. That's the idea, isn't it? Too cool. Wow. Man. Too cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, I guess we are going to hear John play another song. Mm. Uh, we, we didn't get into talking too much about the new record, okay. um, but maybe <clears throat> we'll just reflect on that, on that quickly. There's, if if it's okay to touch on it, there's a lot of pain in this record, John. I think I can feel mm. um, in some of the and maybe some redemption in some of the lyrics. Yeah, sounds like it's been an interesting few years. It's been heavy going. Yeah, you know I've put out three, four records, including this one, since the start of the pandemic, mm. and the the first of, of the studio records was a lot about what was going on in my life as it was happening. And this one is is about what went down after I've come through it. So it's more reflective. It's not so angsty, but it's it feels just it's it's like the most um, uh, articulate record I've made. I've really wow. I'm old enough now to really say what I want to say without being worried about it or afraid or ashamed. And the first song you have to go through that as a writer, you know. And the first song on the record is about my dad's Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. which we found out about three months after COVID started and moved him over from Spain to the UK to look after him. And um, There's stuff on there about, you know, miscarriages that we went through and, and my mum's health and it's, but it's all, it's all tied up in, you know, it's kind of like, there's nothing, it's not like this song is about this, this song is about yeah, this. Yeah, it's yeah. all, it's all just uh, kind of fed me as a writer and, you know, Richard Hawley said to me once, I've I've been friends with him for a long time, having opened for him, and he's he's a real sage. If I if I'm if I'm in a tight spot, I'll call Richard and he'll say, Right, listen, <laughs> here's what you need to know. And he goes to me, um, you know, bad things happen and they consume you, and then before you know it, they're in your rearview mirror and you're looking at them going driving away, going, Oh right, that that was big. And then you're on to the next thing. And it and it's so true, it just um suddenly you're Older and wiser, and yeah. You, and you're moving towards something else. This, that was one of those things when the bad. One of the challenges is when those bad things are happening, and you're in the middle of it. You can't see mm. that point where it's going to be in your rearview mirror because you're so engrossed in it. Yeah, you but can't actually, imagine it. No, you can't. Yeah. That's one of the one of the things about being in that state of mind. It's yeah. just very interesting. But but uh, yeah, I think when you're in that, um, like. For, Certainly for me, and we'd had this conversation a lot, one of the first things that goes, certainly for me, is creativity mm. when you're in that place. However, if you can find enough energy to sit down and try and express what you're going through, some amazing stuff can happen. Mm. Um, but it does take a effort when you're in that spot yeah, you as can't. opposed to being reflective. For sure. You know. 
It's like you can't imagine being creative. There you go. Yeah. But, it's... you know, I've learned through through being in that spot for quite a prolonged period of time during the pandemic. Mm. It's really about, like, holding your guitar once a day or once every couple of days and maintaining a physical connection. Or if, it, if pedals are your thing, just stick, your, stick them on and at least watch the thing light up <laughs> and just remember that it's there and it's for you and that's your that's your tunnel out of, of the spot that you're in. So I, at least once a day, especially when I'm having a hard time, I just make sure, you know, I could be having a 16 hour day of, mm. of other stuff. I just mm. make sure I put my hand on a headstock and it's okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay. We're, we're going to get, we're going to get back to it. You know? Love it. Yeah. Love it. Just, does it, does it feel redemptive to finish a piece of work like that and, and put it out? It does. It feels so so strange to finish the process and hand it over it yeah. takes i'm still getting used to it but bob dylan said that you know you can't be responsible for the way people hear your songs you just you hand it over and then it belongs to them mm. and what did you mick what did you tell me about it dave a, Grohl? it was a dave Grohl quote that i may be misquoting but it was something to do with um you have one reason to play the song and there's 10,000 reasons they want to hear it or something like that. 10,000 right. meanings they attach yeah, to the one okay. meaning that you had. There you and go. It, it's, it's the same quote, just put differently, I think. Mm. Exactly. So you, you put it out in the world and then it's and then it's beyond you. It belongs to other people and it, and it takes on new meanings and new shapes. Yeah. And that's a, that's a great thing, you know, when you hear how people are living with the songs. Mm. It's really beautiful. So I'm okay with it, you know. It's just a lot of work getting it to that point, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, please give it a spin. We're not entirely sure when this video is going to come out, but um, we'll put the release date here. And if it's out, uh, go and give it a spin. And if not, all eyes on that date. Um, before we hear another song then, John, is there anything we've missed on the acoustic guitar? Um, you did talk briefly about playing slide. Do you, do you... Yeah, I... There's there's only slide on this record as overdubs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's no featured slide, which took me by surprise, having got the Mavis and played a load of slide on there. Yeah. Blue came along, the electric guitar, and just steamrolled everything. And yeah. those songs are just all about finger picking. Mm. Um, you know, I I was really, I sort of went in there thinking I want to make a record that sounds as idiosyncratic as Hedgehog or all the records I love, Spirit of Eden, Solid Air, that is, is like it's, it lives in its own space and I'll never make another record like it. That's but it. still sounds like me. And that's where Joe Henry came in, who mm -hmm. has produced so many great records. And I've played on loads of his records. He's a great songwriter. And then he's had me in sessions with people like Joan Baez just playing no guitar, way. you know. I know. That it was so cool. It was terrifying, man. Yeah, I... It was so scary. <laughs> and Queens of the Stone Age were in the studio next door, who are one of my favourite bands. And he, the you know the big man yeah. Joshua Homme came in. He's a big Joan Baez fan, so he came in and just like sat on the bench, just watching us sing with the rest of us. All of us awestruck. He just sat there for a bit, like, and he was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" And disappeared. It was amazing. <laughs> Who'd have thought Josh Josh Homme and Joan Baez in Huge one uh, Joan Baez fan. anyway in one story? <laughs> know, clang. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's great. I think. Uh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these things, you know, it's beautiful to the way music brings people together like that. Yeah. Anyway, I've I've been a fan of Joe for such a long time, and when he when he said that he wanted to produce the record, I just handed it over to him. I let go of control. I just went in with the songs, and and he steered the ship, and it was really it's a liberating thing. Have you Ooh, done that before? Thing. Yes. Yeah. On Headlong and Hummingbird. Yeah. And then I've. I've produced, um, I don't know, or, or co-produced three of my records. and It's a great feeling when when someone's at the front with the steering wheel and they know where they're going. Mm. And you're and I, I was able to sing and play in a way that I haven't done before on tape. So it's a nice experience. Happy days. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, John, thanks for coming to see yeah, us. Yeah, mate. Thank you mate, so much. such a pleasure. Thank you so much for starting me on this path, you, you know, Six years ago, you kind of took the ideas I had and galvanized them. Then, you know, behind the... I don't know if I should say you're welcome or apologize. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> it weighs as much as a four by ten. But... <laughs> no, I, honestly, yeah. it's so beautiful to hear those ideas, you know, done in such a musical way. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, 
man i'm i'm very inspired after hearing this thank you man thank likewise you. yeah okay um, people um we'll stick some links to john's stuff here and in the description below please go check that out uh, please check out that pedalshowstore.com to buy your bits of merch, which helps us carry on this crazy caper. Uh, thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Indeed. Thank you to yes. our preferred retailers. Indeed. Click the thing down. See all the info. You know what to do. And this glorious man's going to uh, play us out. Thank you so much, John. What a pleasure and a privilege. Thank you for having me, boys. Thank you.